I understand and realize that a, a husband and a wife coming together in a ceremony like this as bride and groom are not going to remember 90% of what I'm about to share with them. So I thought I'd like to do something a little creative that I've never done before. Since you both are teachers, I kept thinking, what can I do to share with them that might make a memory? So I went by Metal Lands Elementary School one day, and nobody was there. I called a couple of times, and still nobody was there. So then I enlisted my covert spy, Ms. Kim Jones. And she did a little work for me, and she texted me what I was looking for. And what I was looking for was your class rules. So she, when she texted me, I noticed there's five of them. And today, what I want to do with the two of you, I want to take your class rules, and I want to show you how you can have a wonderful, happy relationship together following those class rules. Your first class rule, I know you know these by heart. I don't want you to be great, but here you go. <laughs> the first one is, follow the directions. So obviously, when you're in a classroom setting the two of you, you're trying to get your kids' attention. You want them to follow your, your guidance. You're kind of the authority figure there in the room. Well, what happens in a marriage? What I'd like to say to you is remember who your authority figure is. And it's God. And it's His Word. It is God who's bringing the two of you together today. It is God who is blessing what you two do today. And the Bible itself, remember, the Bible wants to be that guide for your life. The psalmist said, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light into my path. I want you to know the greatest book ever written on marriage is the Bible. I want you to know nobody is for you all more than God. I pray that every single day that you are husband and wife to death separation, you will allow God to be present in your home. That you will read His Word, that you will meditate upon His Word, that you will apply that Word to your life. That you will always allow Him to be the authority and that you'll follow the directions that are disclosed in His Word, the Bible. That one's fairly easy. The second rule you have in your classroom is feet and hands to self. And that becomes a little interesting. Let's just call it respect. Okay? In fact, the Bible says in Ephesians 5, however, let each one who love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Always treat each other as a VIP. Rochelle, when it comes to showing respect to Greg, invite his opinion when making decisions. Affirm him on a regular basis. Speak well of him. When you're in the presence of other people, believe the best about him. Let him know how much you need him in your life. And that will demonstrate respect. Greg, when it comes to showing respect to Michelle, listen to her heart. Speak well of her to others. Stay in touch with her during the day. Confide in her when making decisions. Always show her mutual respect for one another. And it will go very, very well for you. Rule number three is extremely interesting. Small voices inside, tall voices outside. So let's communicate, because I believe that's what you're after there in your guideline for your kids. And that means share meaningful communication with one another. Grow in your understanding of each other. Be honest. Remember these questions to ask each other. How are you really doing? What decisions might you be struggling with? What relationships are giving you strength and which relationships are absolutely draining you? How can I encourage you? How can I pray for you? What has God been teaching you lately? You see, you want to allow your spouse to not only hear your words, but also to see and hear your heart. And when you're communicating with each other, be courteous and thoughtful. Listen for what you do not hear. Communicate with respect and honor. Seek to understand each other's feelings as you talk to each other. 
You know, according to marriage authorities, it takes three to ten compliments to overcome one negative comment, depending on the damage that's been inflicted. I would suggest to be positive. See the good in the other and communicate with each other. Don't take each other for granted. And one way to do that is to communicate openly, honestly, and love each other. Rule number four, work together. Let's call it unselfishness for a moment in your marriage relationship. The one word, the one thing that contributes to more happiness in marriage is unselfishness. Jesus might call it service. I mean, think about it. Whether you intend it or not, life after you marry today is no longer a matter of I, mine, or me. It is naturally replaced with we, ours, and us. Life is about two people going in one direction, whether husband and wife. So what you want to do in your service to one another is you want to identify the needs of each other and then seek to meet those needs. Demonstrate unselfishness without looking for reward or even keeping score. Being unselfish means being generous with your time. It means saving the last piece of cake for your spouse, scraping the ice off the windshield on a cold day because you're leaving the house first. It's doing the little things without being asked. One little word of caution here. You think your spouse is going to meet all your needs. They won't. Just remember, there's only one person who can meet all the needs. Let's go. And finally, the last rule, Rochelle, in your classroom is do your best. And I want the same for you all in your marriage relationship. Let's put it this way. Let's call it on the extra mile. Paul said, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all the glory of God. Go the extra mile means that you do your best to give each other the benefit of the doubt. You do your best to resolve conflict peacefully and quickly, for sweeping problems under a rug and magically make them disappear. You do your best not to take your partner for granted, show appreciation and gratitude, grow your love for each other. Do your best to allow God to be the center of all you do. So, don't be surprised when you get back to your honeymoon that there's a new class of rules in your home. Okay? But those are the rules that you have in the classroom. Those are the rules of being well in your marriage and your faith and others. Let's turn one another and share the gospel. Greg, I'm going to with you if you'll repeat these words after me. Put from your heart to the shell. I, Greg, to you, Rochelle. I, Greg, to you, Rochelle. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or poorer, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, sickness and in health, to love and cherish, to love and cherish, until death is part. From death to part. So Michelle, if you would share your vows from your heart to the grave, I Michelle take you, Greg. I Michelle take you, Greg. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or poor. For richer or poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and cherish. To love and cherish. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. Every covenant has a sign of symbol <coughs> to remind each party of the responsibilities that he or she brings to the covenant relationship. Rings are a symbol of love. They're visible reminders to you and to everyone around you that what you have promised, you will do. And by your word, there's a constant reminder that you've pledged together and you're committed to one another for life. Friends. Great, you'll take the ring, place it on the third finger of the left hand, and hold it there for a little bit. As you do, you will give these words that you in your heart to Rochelle. Rochelle, I love you with all my heart. Rochelle, I love you with all my heart. I give you this ring you the train. as a sign of my love, a sign of my love. and constant faithfulness. And constant faithfulness. Michelle, if you'll take the ring, place it in the third finger of his left hand and hold it there for the Lord, please. Repeat these words from your heart. Greg. Greg, I love you with all my heart. Greg, I love you with all my heart. And I give you this ring. 
love you this way. As a son of my love. And constant faithfulness. As we turn our attention to the unity candle, Greg and Michelle put together some words they wanted their parents to know before they go in a moment and light the unity candle. These are their words to their parents, and I quote. To our parents, we want to thank you for the unconditional love, the commitment and support you have shown us all our lives. We are both so blessed to have such wonderful parents who have been great examples for us on how to live and love. Without your guidance and support, we would not be the people that we are today. We can never tell you enough how much we appreciate you and all that you've done for us and in preparing us for this day we will start our lives together. We love you with all of our hearts. Amen. If you look behind me, you see two lights. There are two distinct lights. They're each capable of going their own way. To bring joy and harmony to your home, there must be those merging of two lights into one. Jesus says, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. From now on, your thoughts will be for each other rather than individual selves. Your plans will be mutual, your joys and sorrows will be shared. I invite you now to go to the union candle and publicly express your commitment of oneness.